Hello guys, today I'd like to talk to you about my initial impressions on the all new Riga Kite speakers. I say initial impressions because I borrowed them from No Noise Hi-Fi in Toledo, Ohio for the weekend only. I borrowed them Saturday night and have been listening to them for a few hours every day until having to return them back Tuesday afternoon. My friend Rob, who owns and operates No Noise Hi-Fi, had them just set up early last week. Um, and he goes home after work to his 50 plus K system setup that he listens to every night after work. And he tells me he liked the sound of the kite so much that he felt like going back to the store and listening to them. Now that's something. So I asked him if I could borrow them. So here they are. Uh, the kites retail for seven ninety five USD. They are also going to be part of Riga's System One setup that consists of the Riga Planar One turntable, Riga IO integrated, and of course the kites. In the UK, they sell for about one k GBP, and in the US, uh, perhaps close to fifteen hundred USD when they come out. The kites are unique in many ways. They're not made of wood. The cabinets are actually made up of synthetic polymer, essentially what they call phenolic resin. But you knock on them and they sound pretty dead and inert. That's because they're internally braced with ceramic plates and carefully engineered cross bracing, which makes the cabinets extremely stiff. This prevents unwanted resonances from the cabinet interfering with the output of the driver's uh, which improves its accuracy, dynamics, and bass impact. So it's a two-way rear-ported design with a handmade 5-inch MX125 uh, base unit and the Riga's uh, designed ZRR high-frequency driver rated at the usual 6-ohm impedance and a fairly efficient 89 dB they come with a uh, supplied foot at the back that goes on the rear to to uh, angle them appropriately. Um, but also optionally, they sell this L bracket, if you can see in the picture, that mounts onto the back too, that allows you to place the kites on stands. But uh, although, but I suspect they can be placed on stands with the supplied feet as well. But I got these with the L bracket, so I have them on 26 inch uh, tall stands. And the tweeters pretty much at your level sitting in my listening chair. I primarily drove the kites with the Riga Brio integrated amplifier. And what immediately struck me with these is the clarity in the mid-range and the speed as well. Very detailed and impactful. Piano bodies are clean sounding, very well formed, wide sound stage, not too forward, not too laid back. They sounded just right. I kept listening and kept thinking, there is nothing notably lacking in the performance of these speakers. They are resolving, they have the detail in the bass, in the mid-range and the highs, they're very easy to position. You can have them close to the front wall and improve bass response a bit without mudding up the bass. Now, the bass was really surprisingly adequate uh, and more importantly, detailed and very articulate. It obviously cannot have the slam of a bigger drive unit uh, of a seven inch or an eight inch, and that's just physics the limitations of a 5-inch driver having to move air. While you may not feel the deep bass hit you in the gut like a bigger driver would, you can certainly hear the fine details in the bass. Let's talk through a few album examples. This is Creedence Clearwater Revival's first album, self-titled, and the track is Suzy Q, their first uh, single out of that. Uh, from 1968, I believe. So this track begins with a cool studio trick from the 60s era where the drumming begins and it sounds far and distant 
with hall reverbs and echoes and it zooms inward into the plane of the speaker and there is a lot of depth in the sound of the bass drum and the snare and the cymbals with texture. The resolution these speakers are capable of enables you to get a clear window into the recording and hear those subtle spatial cues and get a feel for the space of the recording venue itself. The whole track sounds dynamic and punchy. The guitar and vocal distortion added during the studio mixes were clear the right amount of grunt for a typically awesome CCR track. Next is Pink Floyd's Delicate Sound of Thunder. Um, this album is the 2020 reissue um, that is remixed and remastered. This version of Delicate Sound of Thunder sounds even better than the original. And the kites really showcased this fantastic recording. The bass and the guitar growls in the beginning of the track, Sorrow, is just all enveloping. The depth of the bass drum kicks and the bass guitar snaps, uh, the beginning and the end of the track, Learning to Fly, uh, the melodious guitar solos on yet another movie, and Gilmore's more energetic and slightly guttural but macho younger voice just sounded so right and so clear i was impressed and i kept listening for hours on end uh dexter gordon's tenor sax on the track darn that dream sounded so sweet and detailed with the speakers even close up to the front wall i could get a sense of the space around the instrument and where uh, this track was recorded ZZ's piano solo, hope you can see. ZZ's uh, piano solo playing Let's Sonata in B minor had body, detail, and depth. All this with modest amplification, that is the Riga Brio integrated. So as you can see, I'm impressed with the Riga Kites with the few days that I spent listening to them. To me, they sound like a solid value for $7.95 USD. Some people may get put off with them. Why am I paying nearly 800 bucks for something that's so light, uh, only one color and no grills? Yes, they are light, but intentionally so. Not to be cheap, but so they can be made super stiff and thus inert thanks to the ceramic internal bracing structure. They are light because they're made of phenolic resin. I personally think this is a very intelligent design. Lighter structures lend themselves to be made very stiff and inert, which is important to not let the cabinet vibrations affect the actual output of the drivers. So you hear what the driver's output is without being colored by the vibrations from the cabinet. Also, the delicate tweeter has a sort of a grill protecting it, so, and it also doubles as a dispersion control of sorts. So I really like the design engineering here, and it shows in the sound. That's how Riga managed to give you stellar sound at a very reasonable price by adopting clever design principles. I do think I will soon be able to listen to the kites again as part of Riga's System 1 setup. So I really look forward to listening uh, to that system. If, you, uh, if you'd like to listen to these kites, ask your local Riga dealer. Or if you live close to uh, the Toledo area or uh, Detroit Metro, go visit Rob at No Noise Hi-Fi on Secor Road in Toledo. You can hear what these kites have to offer for yourself. So that's it for now, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe if you like the video. Also remember to click the notification bell button so you're notified every time I post a new video. Thank you once again for watching. Until next time, see you.